Yay. Hi. All right, let's see. So I don't see Chris and we've got on the agenda, let's see, uh, KubeCon, we can skip that and see if he comes later. Um, I wanted to have a quick discussion on documentation and uh, let's see, Dave had uh, Envoy Network Service Extension requirements. Anyone have anything else that they wanted to add? Mm, nope. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see. So uh, I guess we can our stuff really um, this will be pretty short. So you know, we, we've been trying to do obviously various things to make the, the documentation better. And the problem of course, is that the documentation serves a bunch of very different audiences. There's people, uh, you know, that are relatively comfortable with the concepts and, and can use it more as a reference guide. There's people that come to it and, you know, don't, don't know where to get started. So we have funding, um, you know, through CNCF to pay documentation writers to go through and, and basically do whatever we want them to do. But it's become pretty clear to me that it's hard to a find someone that you can just go off and, and, and go do that. So they need a bunch of guidance and, and B, um, you know, it needs to be a little more explicit in terms of what we actually want them to, to do. So I've been, you know, thinking about how to kind of step back and, and maybe come up with some more uh, like concrete project guidance on, on what we want from the, the documentation. And I realize that most people on this call pro probably don't care because you're here because you probably understand what's going on. So it's not as relevant to you. Um, but I just wanted to throw it out there and see if anyone had any strong uh, opinions or thoughts on documentation stuff, um, or you know, if you're interested in actually helping out just from a, like a project management perspective, that, that would be super useful. Hey, um, uh, it's Nicholas. Uh, so one thing that I've noticed from being in the, uh, the Slack channel is one of, um, one of the big areas is uh, there aren't e a lot of uh, example use cases for Envoy in, either in the repo or published on the docs that uh, are that have enough of the, uh, the feature set that people could actually reference those instead of uh, asking in Slack. So that might be one area in which um, documentation could be improved. Do you, do you feel that, so we have the, the complete examples, there's like the front proxy, the service to service and the double proxy. The problem is that those are, those are V1 configs. Um, there's someone that's theoretically working on getting those over to, to V2. Um, I, I guess, do you feel that, and this is kind of my feeling too, is like if we paid someone just to basically go through and like get those documentations converted to YAML and then maybe even comment the documentation or sorry, comment the configs. Like, do, do you think that would help as kind of like having a more complete example set? Or do you feel that we need like a mock management server and, and, and like the full, like the full end to end thing? So this is Dave Wallace. So as, as someone who's just recently, you know, gotten up to speed on Envoy and gone through the, the, the collateral, um, I, I kind of want to say both, but I would start by converting, you know, I think the conversion of the, the examples to V2 is probably, you know, low hanging fruit, it's a good place to get started. The other thing that I found is that, um, like last week I spent a lot of time just going through the blog and reading all of the blog posts. Um, and that really did the most outside of the code to fill in, you know, architecturally what it is you're doing and, you know, how things work and how things should be set up. So I'm wondering if it would be 
Yeah, I mean, I know you have some references to the to the blog posts on the front page, um, but I'm just trying to think if there's any better way to organize that as a kind of you know, yeah, start it, here and, and follow the th- follow the thread. Yeah, it, it's just like this is this is a super tough thing, and I'm just going to be totally honest because, like, I, at certain times with the documentation stuff, I feel kind of lost because I feel like you know, I would like to find someone to pay to basically work on this. But every time we try to do that, I feel like I have to basically manage that person almost full time, at which point I can write the documentation myself so much more efficiently that I should just go off and do that for two weeks. So like part of this is even just me like desperately asking, you know, and you don't have to do this now, but like if any of you offline, um, I think we're just looking for people that whether it be as a hobby or they want to make some money or they, they just want to learn, they're like technical enough that they can understand all of the concepts, but they're also a good writer. And the problem is that like, that is such a small intersection of people that like trying to find that person is like so complicated. So, you know, I, I, I totally agree. It's like, we need more examples. Like we need better cross-linking. We need honestly someone just to go through the existing documentation and look for inconsistencies and like do more cross-linking and, and various things. And maybe that's a place to start from a contractor perspective. Yeah. It's just finding someone who can, do those things without like a ton of guidance. I, I just, again, I just, I feel lost finding that person. So I hear you. It's, it's, it's well, and you know, the, the problem is, is software development's a river. And so you, the, the biggest problem, you know, we've had the same thing with, with Fido and VPP is, you know, so much of our documentation is now two years old and we're two and a half years into the open sourcing of it. And, you know, we constantly getting references to, oh yeah, well, you know, sorry, but that's referencing really old dead code. Yeah. Some of our documentation. So oh. it, it is a perennial problem. Yep. I, I have an idea about the whole example part. Um, so like Nicholas was saying, we have seen a lot of questions come up in the Slack channel. This is more for beginners where it's like, you know, how do I set up mutual to LS? How do I set up circuit breakers? How do I set up all this stuff? And uh, my idea there would be if we get a contractor uh, for them to comb through Slack, the, the Envoy users channel, and get all of the scenarios of like, uh, people have been asking, how do I set up ABC and then write up guides like, like we've written for the examples with the, with the front proxy and the uh, service service proxy. Uh, the other idea I have there, uh, you know, you're, you're asking about how, how do we find someone that is uh, technical enough and a good writer and I mean, I'm not sure about how this would work, but with Brooke and the Learn Envoy.io, she, I mean, she's written a lot of very good documentation there. And I don't know how Turbine, you know, but but maybe that's that's an option. Yeah, we've we've been, we've been through that offline, so that's okay. that's not something that I, I think would be good to discuss here. So, okay. um, but but yes, like we can we can look into that. Um, the other idea that I had, but this would again require work, is we actually have a mountain of config snippets that are in in the tests. And one one thing that did occur to me is, and this would be more of a development task, like a development doc task, would be to actually find some way where, again, I don't know how this would work, but like for for the config snippets that we have that we run in unit tests be able to actually have them be part of the docs and then import them for testing or export them from the test like into the docs. And it's like not every snippet, but almost every feature has like fairly complete YAML, YAML configurations that are buried in there somewhere, but like no end users is like going to go find them. But the other reason that I like that stuff is that avoids bit rot because if you were basically like, if you were running the tests on the stuff that's in the documentation or exporting them or vice versa, like the configs cannot become stale. So that's, that's another area that I thought of maybe trying to pursue. Um, just because again, like across almost every feature, we have lots of example configs that I feel like would be more helpful if they were linked into a particular section. So that's something else that kind of occurred to me. I, I can I can get that going or or at least think about that. 
but um yeah so yeah i mean we can talk to the turbine people more but again there's there's some corporate interest there so that you know a lot of that's not going to get contributed back so there's things that are that are at, at odds so anyway i mean it, unless other people have like happy to keep the discussion going um if there's other ideas that that people had but i mostly just wanted to put put it out there that we're, um, you know, that we're looking for, um, that we're looking for, uh, you know, pe 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 people to help out basically. Well, I like the idea of, uh, of taking the, the configs out of the test and exporting them because I agree that solves a bit of a problem, but um, don't have an immediate solution for how to make that happen. So I'll think about it. <laughs> Is it is it feasible to ha have you, Matt, or someone uh, do an outline of what the docs should cover? Yeah, and then just let people contribute like smaller, yeah, like I, yeah. Like I think that's a that's a great right. No, I think you're exactly right, um, and I I I think that we're going to have to put more effort in. So I think you're right that like doing uh, like an outline or even targeting specific cases that we know are, are rough. Um, I, I feel like there's two major points. There's the, there's the general introduction of concepts. So that's, you know, something where it might be difficult to actually get someone else who's not super familiar with the project to actually get in there. But then I just feel like, a lot of people just need config snippets and it's like, you know, how do we get those done in a way where they're accurate and don't bit rot. Right. And like cover a decent amount of stuff. And that's why I keep coming back to this idea of like, we have all these snippets that people have written to write unit tests. And even though they're dummy snippets, like most programmers could look at those snippets and then follow the docs, I think without, without any issues, particularly if they were commented. So, you know, one, one thing would be to like look into having a programmer pay someone to build a little framework where again, either import export one, one way or the other, like tag the ability to have these snippets come, come in and out of the code and the docs, um, and then print them in such a way that they're useful. So, but yeah, I, I, I think that I or someone else is probably going to have to sit down and carve out several days of time to do like an outline of, of what we need. Yeah. All right. Um, so we'll, we'll keep thinking on this, but again, since this is videotaped, if any of you who eventually watch this want, want to help out, uh, that, that would be super appreciated. Um, Chris, are you here now? Hmm. He did join. He's joined, but he's on the, phone so i don't know okay well um dave do, do you want to talk about the network service stuff sure um so you know iterating through uh well so there's 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 a couple couple of high level issues one is um i'd like to make sure that we've got all the requirements captured before i try to do too much moving forward and so uh um, in particular, the eBPF, uh, I haven't seen any input from the Cilium guys. And so I don't know who would be working on that. I can, I can link you up offline over email. Um, okay. yeah. So that would be either Thomas or Yarno or yeah. Um, okay. we can, we can, we can chat with them offline. Yeah, I didn't. I mean, I know a lot of people were at KubeCon last week, so I didn't. wasn't going to try to push that. Um, yeah. So the, the the main thing that I've distilled from from what we've got now is um, the the use of the of the POSIX socket calls are kind of ad hoc right now. Some of them, you know, are done. Uh, directly by just referencing, you know, syssocket.h and making calls and linking stuff in there. Uh, there's a couple other places where there's um, um, socket options stuff that's not complete. There's some, there's the OS sys singleton ha contains like bind and get and set socket opt. Um, and so as I was looking at 
you know, how to address this. It really seems like the mo most pragmatic way to move forward would be to try to consolidate all of that into, you know, really kind of a network service or network socket singleton that we could then, you know, replace all of the ad hoc calls to through SIF socket through that singleton. And then we can look at, you know, um, for, for VCL VPP, we've modeled our API after the socket interface. So that's kind of trivial for us to do. Yeah. I, I don't, I don't think we want an actual singleton. I mean, I, I, I think we need a factory that like spits out a, a wrapper and right. I mean, to be perfectly honest, like it's not, it's not going to be glorious, but I also don't think it's super difficult. Like, I think you just got to get in there and, and just like keep changing code until you make it happen. And okay. I, I, and like the way that I would approach it is, and, and I think this can be done at relatively low, low risk is like, don't in phase one, don't worry about VPP. It's just like, I would just delete any of the core calls that like ask for the FD, just like delete that function. And then right. basically just see what breaks and just keep fixing things like until you abstract away, like until you abstract away such that the FD is only held by essentially one class. Right, um, so, so do you want to, so the, the question, the reason why I, I, I you know, and maybe I'm just using my terminology wrong. The reason I use singleton because um, from a, it, it really seems like you want a global wrapper class. I, I, I agree with Matt on this one. We don't because when we're using quick, we're going to want sockets for TCP and then the quick kind of logical socket operations. Essentially, if you have a TCP listener and a quick listener, you can't have one singleton handling them both particularly well. Right. You want it, each it, underlying connection to have either a quick FD wrapper or a TCP FD wrapper or whatever we call it. But okay. if you have a singleton, you cannot, they cannot coexist. Yeah, right. Agreed. Agreed. It, it's just, well, the, the alternative is try to embed the, I mean, we've got kind of like transport socket, which is almost at a different layer. And then we've got the socket class that's used in, um, in the address instance. Uh, and so those have some socket characteristics in it, but, they don't provide a clean place to put in a, a factory. We'd end up generating multiple factories for each of the derivatives. Um, and that's kind of where I got lost when I first tried to tackle this. So I was trying to pop the whole thing down a layer such that we just had uh, you know, a network service factory that would create whatever, whatever we need uh, you know, based on, on you know, what services. Are, are yeah, it, it's not, I, you know, I'll be totally honest. It's not completely obvious to me without getting there, getting in there and actually doing the work. Right. Um, I, I, what, what I would do, um, I, I think just to move forward and get the conversation going mm -hmm. is like, I would start a branch and I would just delete the, the FD function. And then, and then just like start working backwards and like seeing how it flows. And then if you get stuck, just like push a branch and then we can basically talk about it. Okay. Uh, like, I, I don't, I don't, I guess I don't see any way forward other than just doing that lifting. And, yep. you know, it, it, it'll be scary in the sense that you're going to have to change a bunch of stuff, but oh. I, actually don't, I actually don't think it's a very scary change. Like it's mostly right. refactoring and code movement. So like, it's yeah. not, it's not yep. that big a deal. Yeah, and I think at the end of the day, you'll end up with what I think Matt and I had discussed on the doc, which is you'll probably have some sort of socket abstraction underlying, you know, both the transport socket and the connection, and each connection will have their own wrapper class. And then there may be a separate one for the listener, or it may just be one one big joint one. But again, I think once you get into the code and try to divide it up, it'll it'll be a little bit more obvious. Yeah, yeah. Okay. and then I've, like I've sort of done that and gotten stuck. So why don't I just go do it again and I'll publish when I get stuck. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. and, and that, right. I'm, I'm fine with that. And I, and I have no problem going in and I'm not shy. I'll go in and break anything. I just want to try to not, you know, stomp on people's toes. And, I, and, you know, most of what I did last week was try to understand the bigger con constructs of where things bleed through because these layers are never clean. Right. Yeah. I, I think probably just trying to do it 
and then publishing a branch and and telling us how you're stuck and then i think we can we can find a path forward because right. it, that, it that looks, works for me so like at least conceptually this should work and like I, I i understand that there might be some oddities around the fact that like the address class uses a socket and then like calls bind or something and we might have to pass things around like it, it, it it's not totally clear but i feel like I would just start by deleting that function, get as far as you can. And then when you feel like you have a question, just push it, push a temporary PR and just like tag us. And then we can just have a discussion and look at the code and, and then okay. go from there. Um, yeah. I mean, my analysis from what I've done to date is that the problem is that FD as a, as an integer value is passed around as a proxy for a socket object. Mm -hmm. And so the, the question is, is do we try to replace that with a socket object that we're passing references around? Is that? Yeah. Yep. Exactly. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Yep. Got it. All right. Let me go yeah. work on that. I got it. Right. And it's not, again, like it's not super clear as to whether there's one of them or like it's a shared pointer or I, I just don't know. Right. So it's yeah, like, well, I, I mean, I, part of it is the socket API itself is, is, you know, so historical in nature that it's a mess to begin with. So, you know, it's where like I ran into a case where on the client side, you know, bind was being called. Well, you don't have to bind on the client side. I mean, I'll, I'll push a PR to, to clean that up anyways, because you just don't need to do it. It doesn't hurt anything, but um, you know, there's just it's not clean anyway so it, it it it's highly understandable how things end up the way they are okay. so i'll just go work on cleaning stuff up then that, that's that's good that's yeah good. i would just get in there and just and just do it and then when you get stuck just tag us and we'll and we'll help help you all right understand. all right sounds like a plan great are you there now chris uh, you hear me now? Hello. Hi. No. Not yet. I, I can. Oh, perfect. Cool. I think we can barely hear you. Oh, sorry. I'm in a cab. Um, yeah, I was just looking for feedback on KubeCon last week. Um, if you have anything, let me know. Did you want it now, or do you want people to email you? Uh, both. Whatever works. <laughs> okay. Um, anyone out there have any KubeCon feedback? Uh, I have I have general positive positive feelings. Good good conference. Good conversations. A lot of community engagement. I particularly like the meet the maintainer section because people had the opportunity to come and ask questions that they might have not had the opportunity to ask. You know, face to face, which always helps. So that's that's my feedback. I had. Um, oh, we plan on repeating that. Yeah. I had, a, I had a couple of pieces of, of feedback. I, I think that um, for the project deep dive sessions, it would be nice to have longer sessions. 35 minutes was just too too short. Um, I, I just felt like it was very rushed, like try, trying to have conversations. So like, I totally understand why the main track talks are 30, 35 minutes, but I feel like we should have a way of either doing double double blocks for project sessions or or, something like that, just so it's not, not so rushed. Um, and then I also felt like, at least from the project session perspective, it would be nice to be able to do m like more variety of things. So for example, it was really fun to do lightning talks, but I also wanted to do like a whole Q and A session. So I feel like making it that, you know, so that we can do kind of multiple sessions during the conference for people that serve kind of different purposes that, that, that would be cool. Um, and the third thing that I thought would be cool is that the, the conference is so huge now that I think it can be hard, particularly at the social events to kind of just like bump into people who are interested in like talking about Envoy or like talking about a, a, a particular thing. So I also feel like even from a, a night thing, from like a mixer perspective, almost either having like projects, mixers, or like even areas of the event to actually talk about particular subjects. Those are my, those are my three, three things. Oh, thanks. Burn down.
Cool. Anyone else have anything? All right. Have a good week, everyone. Bye. Thanks. Have a great week. Bye.